for you guys coming at halftime there? Um, obviously rebounding. You know, they were crashing. Yeah, I think they had 12 and a half, so that was like the biggest thing that we worried about. So um, just getting stops and keep them off the glass and then going out in transition. The run you've been on since you came here with all these 30, 40 point games, was there anything you surprised yourself about with the way you've been able to keep stacking these up? Um, yeah, really in the beginning, because I never was a guy to really get 30. I was always borderline like mid 20s, high 20s. I just could never get 30, honestly. Um, but now, I don't know. I think it's just, I'm just really trying to win. So, like, every shot I take and I'm just being aggressive and trying to make every shot I shoot. Um, Cause I, like I always say, like, yeah, if I'm missing every shot, there's a low chance of us winning. So I'm just trying to make them to, you know, either keep us in the game or take 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 the lead or just keep extending the lead. So it really just, trust me, I wouldn't care about none of this if we were losing. So just trying to keep us in the game and keep trying to help us win. Since you were in Phoenix, you, were, you weren't really the guy until Book got hurt in January and whatnot. I mean, if you had a moment throughout all this when you realized, like, all right, like, I can handle this. Um, yeah, I mean, I got, I always say I got traded at the right time, uh, had a nice rhythm and in the beginning I was struggling. It was tough just do, trying to do everything offensively and defensively, but I found a good little groove and even the games where I might not shot that great, just watching film with my coaches and all the shots, a lot of shots were just like in and out or just right there. But I found a little groove towards the end and cause I just had a, a lot of reps, but, um, yeah, I mean, it kind of it just helped me. It just to prepare me for this moment right now, and I'm just trying to keep going. Kind of following up on that, I mean, did you envision yourself when you were maybe in college or the early years in Phoenix? Did you envision yourself being this type of player who can be the focal point of an offense and carry a team offense? Um, I mean, just as a player, just um, just trying to get better every year. Um, obviously at one point, but um. You know, Phoenix is just, you know, it'll take a little bit, just a little bit more time just because you got guys like C and Book who are, I mean, freaking C's going to be Hall of Famer, Book's going to be one when it's all said and done. Um, so just, I mean, just knowing my role and still being aggressive. Um, but I just knew one day just, you know, I was going to keep growing. There was no time, table, no, like, rush. So I was just trying to get, keep getting better every single year, and that's what I was um, doing. Um, but no, nah, I was just... Obviously, it was always back in my head, just like one day, just got to build to get there. You can't just get there in one year. You just got to keep building, and, um, and eventually, you know, things line up. Um, obviously, I've been grateful um, to be in this situation. Um, so I had to just I had a little jump kick to to what I was, all, you know, wanted to when it was all said and done. But, um, yeah, it's been cool. And, and then second, just tonight, was, was there a point where you knew that you had it going? Um... I ain't gonna be like my boy JC when I when I woke up, um, but uh, no, nah, I just I don't know. I think I had it going a little bit at first, but I was frustrated because I had some bad turnovers and wasn't guarding the way I wanted. But um, I don't know. I just I don't know. I don't I don't really. Sometimes I know where I'm getting going, but I'm so locked on, like, sometimes keep looking at the score, seeing where we're at, and trying to keep pushing away or trying to come back or whatever. So probably after the first quarter, you know, I feel, I, was, I think when I was making threes, I was like, okay, this is, if I'm making, good, if I'm making these threes, you know, to get into the rim and middies, is, that's, that's light for me. You uh, talked about kind of, you know, looking at the scoreboard and pushing, trying to get back into the game. I'm curious from when you guys were down eight, I think, in the second quarter, what was it specifically that you guys found defensively to go on the run to take the lead, you know, that you obviously then carried over into the third? Yeah, um, getting stops and, and limiting a little bit of offensive boards. I think they had 10 offensive boards in the first quarter, maybe, or like two, first quarter and some in the second, but... It was really just the rebounding aspect because they was getting extra possessions. Um, I think we were just lucky to actually be up four at half for all the offensive rebounds they had, but it was really just boxing out and help, helping rebound. And then the last time uh, you faced this team, I mean, they Trey hits the winner at the buzzer, and Spencer, I don't want to say he was beating himself up, but he was saying, I, I just was afraid to be aggressive on him because I was afraid to get the call. What were things that you guys kind of picked up from that game and learned from that game about guarding Trey that you put into effect to be able to hold him down as effectively as you did? Um, I mean, it's, I mean, you've seen Trey for all these years. 
No, we same draft class and been around him so many years. Just how unbelievably talented he is, and I think people just don't understand like how what his IQ is. His IQ is crazy. Like he just knows so much things, and he has just that the, that CP IQ where he just every little thing he sees and does. Um, but I think just great team defense. You know, we were switching and. Clax being on him a lot and doing pretty, doing really well and just helping each other out, just trying to make it tough on him. You know, guys like that, it's tough to just shut down. You know, that's just so skillful like that. It's just got to try to help him make it tough on him. There's only one Nets player who's ever scored more points in a month than you just did, and he got traded for you. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, you know, in your most confident day, would you have said, no matter what, the Nets won't miss Kevin Durant's offense? Because I can... <laughs> uh, I mean, no, like, you understand, like, I've been watching KD since I was a kid, you know, been one of my favorite players. So, um, obviously, no, I mean, he's the... Arguably for me, just one of the best scorers ever. So to even compare myself to that coming in was definitely nothing to compare to. It was just trying to. That's why we had me and Cam. You know, we could we could we could even out the numbers a little bit. Us two for his. So, um, but nah, it's just that's that's an unbelievable stat. That's crazy. Um, but shoot, just getting an opportunity. My teammates, and coaches trust me. Just they give me the confidence to go out there and go play. Obviously, you know, you were playing behind uh, Devin and Chris and Phoenix and just to have this like a moment tonight where you have a 40 point performance and you're at the free throw line and, you know, a fan base is giving you MVP chance. Is that kind of a surreal moment this early into this new uh, experience with this team? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. I obviously wasn't expecting that. I was, I was loving the, the Brooklyn Bridges chant and then I know where the MVP came and my boy A. Holiday was right there, like, man, hell nah. I'm like, man, it's crazy. <laughs> but um, it's just a lot of love, man. That's the biggest thing I take away from being here is just the love from the city and the fans and even when I'm home or walking around, just people are just big Nets fans and just showing love. It's just it's just a blessing, man. They, they made me feel so welcome where, you know, I was a little, little ups I was pretty upset about, you know, leaving Phoenix or getting traded from Phoenix because all my friends and all my teammates and the staff, and I still miss the hell out of all of them and all the fans, but they made me just be so into Brooklyn right away just from the love they've been showing, so I thank them a lot.